Hi guys, in this video I want to look at how a transistor works. We have two main types of transistors, that are BJT and field effect transistors. In this video we are going to look at a BJT transistor. A BJT transistor is a device with two paths for current to flow. We can refer to this path as the control path and the power path. In a BJT transistor, a small amount of current in the control path is used to activate a large current flow in the power path. And also when there is no current flow in the control path, there is also no current flow in the power path. This characteristic is why a transistor is used as a switch or to amplify signals. In this circuit, a transistor is used to switch on and off the light bulb. The control path is connected to a light dependent resistor as a sensing device that triggers current flow in the control path. The control path also contains a resistor with very high resistance. That allows only a very small amount of current to flow in the control path as the control path is connected to a high voltage source where the power path is also connected. When the light falls on the surface of the light dependent resistor, a small amount of current flows in the control path, causing a high current flow in the power path and the light bulb illuminates. When there is no light falling on the surface of the light dependent resistor, there is no current in the control path and also no current in the power path and the light bulb is off. Let us now look at transistor construction and how a transistor works. A BJT transistor is a device constructed with three doped semiconductor regions, separated by two PN junctions. On these regions, we have the base region, emitter region, and the collector region. The PN junction separating the base and collector regions is called the base collector junction, and the PN junction separating the base and emitter regions is called the base emitter junction. Each region is a lead for connection to the circuit. The lead connected to the base is labeled B. The lead connected to the collector is labeled C. And the lead connected to the emitter is labeled E. The three regions of a BJT transistor differ in doping level and size, according to their intended functions. The emitter region is heavily doped. The collector region is moderately doped. And the base region is thin and lightly doped. Doping is the process of adding a controlled amount of impurities to a semiconductor material. Semiconductor material is a poor conductor of electricity. However, after doping, it becomes a good conductor of electricity. Semiconductor materials such as silicon and germanium are doped with atoms of group 3 and group 5. When a semiconductor material is doped with atoms of group 5, such as phosphorus, free electrons are created that will cause conduction in the material when connected to a source of voltage. Semiconductor materials is four valence electrons or outermost electrons, while phosphorus atoms is five valence electrons. After doping, covalent bonding occurs, leaving each phosphorus atom with an unbonded electron. This electron is free and will cause its conduction in the semiconductor material. When a semiconductor material is doped with atoms of group three, such as boron, there is creation of walls that will cause conduction in the material when connected to a source of voltage. Boron atoms has three valence electrons. After doping, there is a wall left from every boron atom, which signifies the absence of an electron. This wall will initiate conduction in the semiconductor material. A semiconductor material doped with atoms of group 5 is called the N type material, and a semiconductor material doped with atoms of group 3 is called the p-type material. The holes and free electrons in the p and n-type materials respectively are created by the process of doping. The materials have not lose or gain electrons. The materials are regarded as neutral. If the p-type and n-type materials are joined together, a junction is formed between the two materials. As soon as the junction is formed, free electrons near the junction in the n-type material cross the junction to combine with holes in the p-type material due to the force of attraction between walls and free electrons near the junction. As electrons cross the junction, the N material loses electrons, resulting in the formation of a layer of positive charges or walls near the junction in the N-type material. As electrons cross the junction, they create an excess of electrons in the P-type material, resulting in the creation of a layer of negative charges near the junction in the P-type material. The two layers of opposite charges on the side of the p-n junction form a depletion region. These opposite charges on the side of the p-n junction also create an electric field 
that prevents further movement of electrons from crossing the junction. The voltage of the electric field is called the barrier potential. The barrier potential of silicon domed materials is 0.7 volts, and for germanium domed materials, it is 0.3 volts. There is something to understand about the PN junction and the barrier potential. When the PN junction is forward biased or forward connected, it allows current to flow. In forward connection, the negative side of the energy source is connected to the N type material, and the positive is connected to the P type material. In forward connection, the negative side of the energy source repels electrons in the N type material, forcing them to cross the junction. The negative side also provides a continuous supply of electrons. As electrons cross the junction, they give up energy equal to the barrier potential. When electrons cross the junction, they combine with walls in the p-type material and move from wall to wall toward the positive side of the energy source as they are attracted by the positive side of the energy source. In this way, current flows. When the p-n junction is reverse connected, it prevents current from flowing. In reverse connection, the negative side of the energy source is connected to the p-type material and the positive is connected to the n-type material. In this situation, the positive side of the energy source attracts electrons from the n-type material away from the p-n junction, leaving walls thus widening the depletion region. At the same time, the negative side of the energy source supplies electrons to the p-type material toward the p-n junction, thus widening the depletion region. This flow of electrons lasts for a short time. As the depletion region widens, the electric field between the opposite charges increases in strength until the barrier potential across the depletion region equals to the supply voltage. In this way, current is blocked. As we have said, a transistor consists of three regions separated by two PN junctions. We have two types of PGT transistors. One with two N-type materials separated by a P-type material is called the NPN transistor, and the other with two P-type materials separated by an N-type material is called the PNP transistor. The following are symbols of PNP and NPN transistors. The arrow on the symbols shows the direction of conventional current that flows from positive to negative. However, to understand what actually happens inside a transistor, we shall use electron flow, which flows from negative to positive. Conventional current and electron flow are two types of current that differ in direction of flow. While the direction of electron flow is the actual direction of current, conventional current is current in which current was said to flow before the discovery of electrons in the 70s. For a PNP and NPN transistors to work, one junction is forward biased, the base emitter junction, and the other is reverse biased, the base collector junction. A forward biased junction is very low resistance while a reverse biased junction is very high resistance. For an NPN transistor, to connect the base emitter junction in forward, the negative side of the battery is connected to the emitter lead, and the positive is connected to the base lead. To connect the base collector junction in reverse, the negative side of the battery is connected to the base lead, and the positive side is connected to the collector lead. Since we are connecting this NPN transistor to a single battery, the base collector junction can also be reverse biased by connecting the base and collector regions to the positive side of the battery, while the emitter region is connected to the negative side of the battery. The connections are reversed when connecting a PNP transistor. When an NPN transistor's base emitter junction is forward connected, only very little voltage is required to push electrons across the junction, usually equal to the barrier potential of 0.7 volts if the transistor is made of silicon. Since the base region is thin and lightly doped, it has very few walls as charge carriers, while the emitter region is heavily doped. A large number of electrons will enter the base region from the emitter region, and very few electrons will move from wall to wall in the base region toward the positive side of the battery connected to the base region. Since the base collector junction is reverse connected, the voltage across the junction is equal to the supply voltage. Most of the electrons that enter the base region having nowhere else to go, are swept across the base collector junction as electrons are attracted by the positive side of the battery connected to the collector lead. This results in the flow of high current through the base collector junction, and this is how a transistor works. In a transistor circuit, the current flowing into the emitter region is divided. The small part goes to the base region, 
and the large part goes to the collector region. Therefore, emitter current is equal to the base current plus collector current. We also have two ratios we can use to find these currents, that are beta and alpha. Beta is the DC ratio of collector current to base current, and alpha is the DC ratio of collector current to emitter current. If beta or alpha are known, you can easily find these currents. Okay guys, this is all we have in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in our next videos.